All right. Thank you for coming on the show, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> I am. Uh, I'm so excited. We were talking a bit before. Um, I well, first of all, so mm -hmm. I discovered you very late. And at first I was, and by very late, I mean like this month and your music. And so I was like kind of cocky where I was like, oh, this is great. I'm not going to be like those other interviews. I'm not going to fangirl over his music. And then <laughs> uh, two things happened. Number one, I was on the beach yesterday uh, chanting and I heard your song you did with Krishna Das as the sun was setting, uh, completely sobbed, uh, just started crying. Oh, oh you mean on the live stream thing? No. Well, I listened to that too. Oh. No, no, no. The old song on your oh, the old, Yeah, my baba, my baba. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Immediately started crying and I was like, I'm going to fangirl so hard. <laughs> and then uh, what I was telling our mutual friend Drew um, is that I was like, it's cool because I have music questions I want to ask him. Oh, cool, cool. But cool. also, I'm like, he should probably know he's in charge of me discovering God. Because, <laughs> which is a little more high pressure. Like, I don't That's know. Very, I don't want the pressure. I know. I was like, maybe it's better if I was just like listing all my favorite songs of yours. And I was like, oh, I'm putting you in a, a much worse situation. Um, the way I've just listened to interviews with you, man. And like, I feel like it came at the perfect time in my life where I don't even know what fucking spirituality means, but I'm starting to discover it. And mm. you sort of speak my self-conscious artist language, you oh. know? Um, and so I want to get into that later, but I thought a good place to start for the audience, because it certainly is not a spiritual podcast. Um, <laughs> so a good place to kind of start where it could be more relatable is can you talk about when it comes to materialism, versus spirituality, sort of the difference. And I don't know if this is kind of where your journey, quote unquote, I never even use the word journey. That's how not spiritual a podcast this is, um, <laughs> started when I've heard you talk about the difference between you as an 18 year old kid, getting mm. a fucking record deal, being loaded with money in Los Angeles, like every yeah, yeah. dream um, could have been living like the Bieber life compared to the happiness you felt sort of in more solitude when you started living at the temple or right. traveling to India and, and kind of going along that path. And you were an artist in both. You were a musician in both. Mm. But talk about the difference between that. Yeah, that's a good question. I. It's interesting because I guess at that point of my, when I signed that big deal, you know, with Geffen, you know, yeah. I, was, I was a high school kid, man. I didn't, I, I, I didn't even really know what was going on you know that's so it fucking was like, wrong. you know i was just like i was a high school i was a senior in high school um and i was at this amazing boarding school called ida wild arts um and i loved this school i didn't i didn't want to leave like when i graduated i was just so happy it was a great community everything i wasn't like so much at that point um i guess like really into the spirituality stuff I don't know stuff. I was like, I was just. You did. Was, what we, you did what we all did, which is you took mushrooms and you were like, "There's got to be something out there." Exactly. I was like, That's I awesome. ate a bunch of mushrooms, and you know, I felt this thing. But um, music was just my life, you know. Yeah. And so I thought, wow, I got signed to this huge record deal. You know, like this is cool. I, I guess I get to do this. You know. Right. Right. Um, and then when I did actually. Uh, signed the deal and, and moved to LA like we were talking about yeah I was 18 I, ha I got all this money and um, got a big apartment on the right on the beach and um, but I, because I went to a boarding school I didn't know anybody right. you know? I, I knew nobody and I'm like all of a sudden in LA like I'm from South Carolina like <laughs> you know like yeah. I, I'm I'm um and I went from the school being such an incredible community, you yeah. know, people and friends. And Dude, I had, by the way, I should also say I'm from, I lived in New York my whole life. Hmm. Uh, I moved to LA at like 33. And even I was like, what the fuck is this? I don't like this. This feels dirty. <laughs> like, and so even if you weren't a kid, I was like, but let alone if I was an, if I was an 18 year old kid and I had a bunch of money and I moved to LA, I would be dead by 19. A hundred percent. <laughs> hundred percent i mean i was just i was just so lonely man you know I was yeah. so fucking lonely i was smoking a lot of weed and was just kind of probably not in the healthiest space and um 
but that space I think is what kind of created the uh, like big exhale when I like fell into this kind of spiritual community Yeah, uh, because it was all, it was everything that was opposite. It was like, I felt so nurtured and loved and there was a community and it wasn't about what you had or this and that and boom, boom, boom. So it was kind of like this opposite side of the coin. Um, and I just realized, I think just, you know, c- quite quickly that just cause I had all these things, you know, I, it wasn't going to make me happy or comfortable or anything like that. So, um, and then I got like, then it was like a horrible experience. The uh, record deal, like I, I, you know, I got shelved, like I recorded two albums, both of those got shelved. They never came out. And then they like dropped me after like, three years which was a blessing to finally get out of it yeah but you know it's just like yeah it was just like a very interesting experience yeah well i definitely later on want to ask you about like industry stuff because i've had similar experiences with agents and and Mm -hmm. and shit like that and and how you kind of broke out of that um but what you said about loneliness was really interesting because what led me to kind of this path um was this is the first year i've ever been alone during a global fucking quarantine right. where I moved out into nature with a girlfriend out of LA to kind of try to save the relationship. Mm-hmm. We broke up the same week. Like my cat died. Like I told someone the other day, I might've even said this on stage where I'm like, my year was bad before COVID happened. Yeah. Like when, when COVID happened, I was like, fucking whatever, man. <laughs> um, and so it was my first year where I'm like, okay, I'm going to be single. Cause I've been codependent and all this stuff. And you realize sometimes that the loneliness I felt when I thought I was successful, when I was on TV, when I had big agents, when I was married, when I had all these like kind of friends, but like people who would validate me when I was on Twitter yelling and getting retweets all the time, I was so fucking lonely as opposed to now where I'm by myself, I don't really know anybody in Tucson. Um, you know, I just found uh, like a, a, a Krishna. Uh, oh, you're in Tucson. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've played there a bunch of times. It's fucking great. Yeah, and I've been to that Hare Krishna temple to get Dude, food. It's a, yeah, <laughs> so I went there just to find vegan food. And I, I had no, I had no <laughs> idea what the, like my friend was literally like, yeah, there's some vegan place. I think it's a cult. And I was like, word. And then I, I went. <laughs> And then I was like, what the fuck is all of this? And yeah, actually, that's a you know, sweet place. Yeah, so, I mean, here's actually how it all happened with, do you know this guy, Ragunath Capo? Uh, sounds familiar. So he I, was on, like, Rogan, I don't know, maybe, like, six months ago, and he was in this huge hardcore band. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, he was in a Shelter? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then went to India, became a monk. A, yeah, yeah. And, and he had this beautiful line on Rogan. And, 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 and uh, dude, I'm somebody who, like, I was an atheist. Like, I opened uh-huh. fucking Richard Dawkins and, like, <laughs> Christopher Hitchens. Like, I just thought religion was mm-hmm. abhorrent. I mean, from the things that, and a lot of it is, right? Uh, yeah. And um, so I heard Ragnath on Rogan's, and he said this line where he goes, I realized that I wasn't playing music for God. I was playing music to be God. And I was like, oh, oh whoa, well, that's, that's what intense. The fuck is this guy? And yeah. so I was going to New York. This is literally right, I think right after the breakup, but before COVID. And uh, so it was like February, March ish. Mm-hmm. And I shot him an email and he was like, yeah, I'm going to be in the city. And he brought me to this Bhakti Yoga Center. And I, yeah, I, 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 yep. And I didn't know what Kirtan was. And he was yeah. like, I want you to see this. And uh, here comes my second story of crying within five minutes. Uh, immediately, I'm just like crying with this guy yeah. who I yeah. just met. And then he's like, hey, I'm going to be in Tucson next week. And I was like, I live in Tucson. And then he brought me to the center. And I was oh, like, oh, this is the place I got vegetarian food. That's cool. And, that's like, cool. He started explaining it to me. And we went hiking with his family. So that's kind of how this world opened um, up. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So well, what I was going to say was the... I technically should be so lonely right now. And if I, and there are times where I am like, for sure. Like when I see like my like cute married friends, like on Instagram during like quarantine <laughs> up or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah. But like, for the most part, man, this is like the least lonely I've ever felt. And I'm sure you had that experience, even though 
yeah, all of the big things that people strive for aren't happening to me right now. I'm right, just like right. waking up before 30 and meditating and shit that I never did before. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, those, those parts are, it's like, obviously when those things are happening, it's, it's, it, it can sting, you know, if you're going through a breakup or this and that, or things are, you know, you're saying like my life was fucked up before COVID, you know, right. like that's really like the, the ground, you know, that's the holy ground to, to, to grow something new in a way, right. you know, to really like strip yourself, strip off all your layers and really be like, Oh shit. Okay. Like, look within yourself you know so those things are I looking back you know like when I was you know really lonely and um like when I went through all the fucking horrible shit at the record label like it was all a blessing you know it all prepared yeah. the ground you know and it still does you know and um it's it's just interesting I guess how that all happens you know yeah well and you you know you, people tell it to you while you're in it and you're like shut the fuck up Whereas i know like, exactly you're like it doesn't like don't give me any like kundun dalai lama stuff right now like right, I just right, right, right. Get in the mud and yeah. just say fuck it all but and man, whatever. even like i was talking to um I was talking to my my uh, an ex of mine last night because oh. quarantine, uh, and she is <laughs> she's a huge fan of yours, and actually I think tried to get me into you and all of this world while we were together, and I you wasn't have still been in the relationship if you just listened to her. I, that, that's all I needed to do was listen to your <laughs> albums, and it would everything and now it's so funny because she's been on the spiritual path for like so long and now like i'm texting her i'm like have you heard of something called chanting and she's like jesus yeah. Christ, Jamie. <laughs> um, like, these are all the things i told you about and i was like uh-huh uh, but i found it that's why it's different but yeah i i remember even like because i was talking to her last night and um she was not so subtly trying to plant questions to ask you and very <laughs> cute and 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 she you know, she knew my cat that died and like, look, the break uh, happens and you go, I'm mm -hmm. gonna get something, you know, I'll find the perfect girl or you get fired from your job and you go, okay, well maybe I wasn't meant to be at that job. But then like something like the cat dies and you're like, this just fucking sucks, right? Right, right. But even with that, it got me, I was so heartbroken about it that like, it got me to go vegan again because I forgot how much I loved animals. It got me to meet some of my like older neighbors because I like played with their dogs. Like you- Right, right. Can, even the things that seem like there's no fucking lesson here. Right. If you play it the right way, um, you can get so yeah. much. I mean, I think I mean, you, you can probably agree where like some of the best shit that probably happened to you came out of the worst shit that ever happened to you. Oh, of course. Yeah. I mean, it's all grist for the mill. It's one of my favorite things that Ram Dass has said, you know, every experience, every moment, every, it's up to us. It's up to, how we look at it like you were just saying you know yeah. to for it to uh be an opportunity for growth or 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 not you know do you ever when you're in it like mm -hmm. now because you've been practicing this for so long you know and it's not always <laughs> good, <love> that. <laughs> but like have you gotten better at while you're in it so while the storm is happening while something shitty is right. happening yeah going, yeah I know every time there's a fucking lesson here and let me just like, I can be upset about it, but yeah. like, are, are, does that help pull you out of it a little quicker or uh, does it take like a hangover or whatever to realize it? Um, I don't, I don't know if I'm that much better. I mean, <laughs> um, there's definitely like, my wife calls them Trevor holes, you know, <laughs> where I go into like, she's like, are you in a Trevor hole? I'm By like, the way, I wrote that down. I never write questions, but there was so much I wanted to talk to you about. I wrote down Trevor <laughs> hole and then I forgot I wrote it. And I looked at it and I'm like, what the fuck weird, what the Trevor <laughs> hole? And then I was like, oh, right, depression. I was like, what gross thing am I asking? <laughs> I think I, I've, I mean, I'd like to think that I've gotten better at, um, I don't think that they la they have they they last as long in a way you know like I don't I don't know if they have as much of a grip you know as as when I was younger and just just you know like um, you know as you I think I don't know if that's also I don't know if that's because of practice or if that's just because of growing growing up and getting yeah. older but um, even even when you even for I can only speak for myself even when I am you know, in a, in a whatever rough spot or struggle or anything. Um, 
I'm kind of, I'm very emotional. So I'm definitely like, I probably make it a lot worse than it actually is, yeah, you know? Um, but um, it's like, even when I am doing that, I think the practice or, or whatever has really helped me to even like say like, Oh, you're, you're, you're doing that. You're making yeah. it worse. And even just having that, just having one step back, like you're, you're, you're doing this thing again, you know, you're doing it. And, and yeah. another part, like, I know I'm doing it, but just let me do it because fuck, you know, Yeah. but at least I'm, there is some other like observer person saying, Hey dude, but, but I don't, I don't know how good I am at like fully identifying with the observer. No, but what you said, I feel like is going to help a lot of people listening to this because, you know, again, this is not a spiritual podcast or really. And we talk about just kind of being fuck ups and getting better. And I bring up meditation to a lot of people who go ugh when they hear meditation because it seems spiritual or maybe they're agnostic yeah, yeah. or, you know, they're like me and they're just like an ADD self-hating artist. I mean, shit, when I started meditating, every time I stopped, I would hate myself more because I was just trapped in my like brain, you know? Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. think a lot of people <laughs> are, <laughs> yeah, and a lot of people are afraid of meditation because that, but what you just said in a weird way, even though I think for you, there's a spiritual component to it, you said something very practical where it gives you the tools to kind of stop and see what is happening mm -hmm. as an observer. And that to me is a very pragmatic, practical, non-spiritual tool where because you know i think especially when we were younger we would identify if something sad happened we would go okay i guess i'm a depressed person or i guess yeah. i'm i'm this whereas now because of meditation and these practices i can kind of go oh i am sad right now i'm probably sad because of this thing i don't like being sad I'm going to be sad for a little bit. And then the observer goes, and then we're going to figure out how to fix it. Like yeah, it's walk or one little breath, one little step, right? That's it. Yeah. That's yeah. it, man. Um, you actually said something that I wasn't planning on asking you. Um, but it's interesting because a lot of like fighters listen to this show. A lot of dudes, um, oh, like MMA guys. Yeah, it's like, they're like hippie girls who listen to it. And then like fighter fighters. <laughs> um, and what you said about being emotional, I think is really important because uh -huh. I've always been, yeah, just a fucking dramatic emotional artist. But I think there are a lot of guys who suppress that. I was talking about it with, um, this woman, Victoria Gracie, who I interviewed last week and how toxic that can be and how a lot of mm -hmm. like this like gross behavior we see in guys, a lot of it probably stems up, stems from this needing to be this, whatever the definition of masculine um, mm -hmm. is. Can you kind of talk about like, uh, I don't even know the question, but like being in <laughs> touch with sort of that emotional vulnerable side and how it kind of, it can balance you out a little mm -hmm. bit too yeah i mean i've always been that way so it's like i don't know what's i don't know um, i don't know another way yeah no I'm this it's idea. like i don't know another way you know i've always yeah. been quite emotional and stuff <laughs> um but uh but i do i fully understand what you what you're asking and and um when i even for me just you know sometimes it's it's hard for me to hang out with other guys in a way you know because i don't Ew. i don't know it's like wow like am i like should i should i like toughen up here or are, like are we all supposed to be calling each other gay and yeah, like yelling at women it's it's just like i i just never f fully you know i only have a handful of you know guy friends because because of that i think yeah. i'm not trying to of course knock you know, other guys or anything. You now so. have two fighter guy friends in me, Andrew. So there you go. <laughs> there that, we go. That, that makes up for your lack of other guy friends. <laughs> is Drew and I can beat up most of them. <laughs> but I, I do feel like, you know, obviously um, we're in a very, we're, we're in a very interesting time, you know, in our whatever evolution or, or humanity. Yeah. Um, but, you know, tox this like tox toxicity toxic masculinity whatever we call it these days it, it's not just like because of this time you know this it's an old old you know thing um i just think i don't know for me like i've just been lucky i guess to have some good role models in my life you know right. to um 
to just inspire me, I guess. Um, but um, I think that, yeah, I think all of us guys need to really take a good hard look at, at ourselves and um, yeah. And really just get in more into our hearts. I don't, I don't think that we have to be these like obviously sappy individuals that cry at everything or like right. whatever, but um being a man, there's a, I feel like there's just like a huge responsibility um, to um, women and also to our world and um, our children. I mean, so many things, you know, yeah. and um, we just have to like really ask ourselves, you know, those tough questions, I think. Um, yeah. And maybe, like you say, maybe like getting more in touch with our emotions and not suppressing things would um, help us do that. You know, yeah. I don't know the right answer, right, wrong answer like this, but um, it's, it's, it's really refreshing. I think when you meet another guy who can just, you know, just be open about how they're feeling or any yeah. person, any person to be honest, you know, in general. Yeah, of course. You know? So yeah, and it's an empowering feeling. When yeah, you're just when you're not afraid to talk about it, or like, yeah, like even what I just said earlier, like yesterday was like I've never cried at a fucking sunset before. I wasn't on drugs. I was. It was just like the the music and the sunset and like oh, what was happening in my life all hit at the same time. And I wasn't like, oh, I I gotta go. I gotta go drink a beer and punch yeah. a guy. I was just like, this is fucking <laughs> incredible. Like right. what a cool thing. I was just moved by a, a ball of light in the sky yeah. to feel this. Like to me, I was like, it was fucking powerful. It wasn't, yeah. I wasn't like, I'm, I'm weak. Suddenly yeah. I was yeah. like, I was, I, I was like, Oh, I wish everybody else could feel this. Like, cause it, it it's such a beautiful, it was such a beautiful experience, you know, uh, mm. but Okay. So let's get into the spirituality stuff. I literally just wrote down what the fuck is spiritual journey and uh, what I mean by that. I don't know. You're asking the wrong person. Well, I think, and that's why I love hearing you talk about it is because you're not speaking from like a place of um, um, sort of like all knowing. That's when I can trust someone. And they're like, I don't fucking know, man. That's when I'm like, you got something that. So, okay. Because it's, so where I'm at is. So I had this experience at the at the temples, and I've just been on this like, yeah, yeah, fucking yeah. Ram Dass kick. I mean, every cliche, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And, and um, but like when I tell someone, when they're like, you know, because mainly it's about quarantine. I'm like, I've used this time to become really spiritual, and they go, Oh, cool. Like, uh, what does that mean? And I was like, I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, yeah. where I mean, all I got where I'm like, is it? Do I, is it a Krishna? Is it the Divine Mother? Am I? Is it a, a Hari Krishna thing? Is it a, a Bhakti Yoga thing? Is it there's some like Buddhism? Oh, I like and, familiar. And, yeah, and you just want like a title just to yeah, say it where it's like, true. what building do I go to? What yeah. thing do I read? Uh, who? Because if I was totally honest, I sound even more of a cliche. Where if they're like, "What's your spiritual journey?" I'm like, "I don't know, man. I had a breakup. I took mushrooms for the first time since I was a kid, and I watched Ram Dass, and I talked to God. That's all I got." Right. Uh, but other than that, I have no fucking no idea. Right. <laughs> Oh, there's no question. You have to respond to me having a midlife crisis. Well, I think I I just laughing because like I was like the, that conversation that you just had, whatever. I'm like, yeah, that I that have that conversation. You know, had that conversation plenty of times. In have my you? Head. Oh my god, bro! Come on, of course. Dude, well, I don't know because like maybe this is because. <laughs> I lived in LA and I'm like, I'm 38. I'm too old to find spirituality, which is like, cause everything's know. about age and looks there. No, uh, these days I, I, I truly don't know, you know, when somebody like, I, I almost hate using the word spiritual path and this and that, because what is, what is it's right. Again, we're separating, we're separating this from that. And it's just another thing that we're doing you know another thing another box we're putting around in our heads like right. this and, that. and like what validates my spiritual path to be more spiritual than your path like what validate we're just living we're 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 life we are mm. that is our path like like 
spiritual spirituality doesn't have to be sitting on a cushion and chanting and lighting incense. I mean, it's everything. It's everything in our lives. It's, it's watching TV. It's walking the dog. It's cooking breakfast, you know, and I found myself recently just almost being frustrated with um, this, this like, this this is the spirit you know you're this is the spiritual path this is a journey you know yeah. because it's just boxing stuff up and for for anybody i i almost feel like it's done more harm to people that are trying to whatever find out who they are or have a closer connection with something greater or whatever because we compare ourselves to perhaps this group or this path and this this is spiritual but this is you know like i mean it's fucked me up you know yeah. like there's plenty of times where i'm you know just sitting in the house and i can't fucking relax right. because my mind is like you're not doing something spiritual you're not right. this and that and it, before you know it it's like i'm this whole thing is causing me more harm than good you know i was one time in india i was with our one of our gurus there and um he's seen me you know go through all sorts of fucking emotional right. dramatic <laughs> episodes you know yeah, yeah yeah he one time he one time in front of a whole group of people he he like was introducing he was like you know sometimes when us westerners you know are there it's like a big thing it's like yeah. so indian folks he's like whoa how are these like blonde like western people here like at the sash you know so he'll he likes to kind of oh this is you know trevor and he's from this and he's you know been coming and all the indians are so impressed you know and one time we were like sitting there and he like looks at me and goes this is you know rampriya what my name whatever and he's like rampriya likes small baby <laughs> he's like always <laughs> whining <laughs> in front of this whole group of Perfect. like Indian folks. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> but one time, one time I, I, you know, I was, you know, in that trip of what's spiritual, what's not spiritual, this and that, even like within spiritual quote, spirituality, like what should I be doing? What shouldn't I be doing? Driving myself fucking mad, you know? Yeah. And, and I asked him, you know, a question about whatever the path or this and that. And um, this is somebody that, I revere, you know, greatly. Um, and he just looked at me and said, just try and relax. Yeah. You know, somebody who is a real yogi in my eyes, who's done so much practice and so much, med what did he tell me? He, he told me, just try and relax. Yeah. Not, not like you should from eight to nine chant this chapter of Bhagavad Gita, uh, yeah. then yeah. after that, you should do walking zazen meditation. Yeah. You know? And that's what you want, right? You want that answer. Yeah, that's what I wanted. I wanted, like, can you give me, like, the magic mantra, you know? Yeah. So I'm kind of venting now, but it's it's it comes from frustration from, oh, my own, good. from my own journey and, like, the judgments that I put on myself. Yeah. Like, well, even so in my own home, like, oh, you're not fucking doing something spiritual, dude. You know, I mean, when I first got into it's so dude, I'm so glad you're venting this because it's really important for people to see and hear because this happens in self help too. I remember the first time I read about positive thinking and I couldn't fucking do it. I'm literally walking around the house going to be positive, you fucking piece of shit. And like, <laughs> it's like, well, this isn't what I'm supposed to do. And then with spirituality, it's even more so because you feel like you feel like, okay, not, I'm, not only am I fucking up life, but I'm fucking up spirituality. How do you, you know? And so it's almost like this bigger burden um, yeah, yeah, you're feeling. Sure, sure. And, 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 and look, I think a lot of it comes from a good place where I, I heard an interview with you talk about when you first discovered uh, Maharaji uh -huh. and being like, I just want to know everything that guy knows. And that is like, I mean, maybe it's an artist in us too, because when I heard you talk about spirituality, I was like, oh, well, he's a guy I like. So I'm just mm -hmm. going to find out what he did. And same with Ramdas. Like, I'm yeah, just going yeah. to find out what Ramdas did. Yeah. Uh, and you probably did the same thing with music. I know I did with, I did with musicians I like, with comics I liked, you know, like, yeah. does Ben Harper smoke weed before he writes a song? Yeah, yeah, for you sure. Know, uh, Dave Chappelle smokes cigarettes? Well, I guess I got to fucking smoke cigarettes. Like, right, right. you know, like when you're a young artist, you just want to almost like yeah. mimic. 
Um, but that's, then, you know, that's inspiration, though. That's out of love, you know? Yes. And that's the difference. That's the, the between being told what to do, because these days we all love to tell everybody else what to do, you know? Uh, yeah. And, and uh, or just being inspired, you know? And I think that's why I fell so head over heels for Maharaji at that time in my life, because he just was so inspiring and he never told I've never felt like I was being told what to do or how to act or what's spiritual or what's not spiritual. It was just yeah. a space of love where there was no moving. Right. Was, you know, well, I want to hear about that, but do you think that as you were talking, I was wondering this craving for identity. Mm. I wonder if it comes from the even though i don't think you were like super religious growing up i wasn't like my mom was a bad christian and my dad was a bad jew and uh so we didn't really we just celebrated christmas and hanukkah so i was like dope religion rules and then yeah same deal i like took mushrooms and i read about taoism and i'm like i guess we're all one and then i just became like an agnostic kind of fuck the church guy but everyone is so used to you are this you because our religions are so uh, monogamous, right? Um, they're not, you listen to Ram Dass and he's quoting Jesus and the Bhagavad Gita and Buddha and all this stuff. And it's so beautiful. But then there's a part of me that even though I'm so open-minded, even though I make a living as an artist, even though like I dropped out of high school, I'm like, fuck the establishment. I still go, yeah, but what are you? Because mm -hmm. I want to be that. And, and again, that same deal, like yeah, that, that uh, there's something in us, not conformity, but you just want the fucking rules. Yeah, yeah. I totally, I totally resonate with that, man. I mean, I, I went through the whole thing of, of who am I? Am I, am I in this group? Am I in that group? What, yeah. you know, what do I call myself? You know, people ask you, oh, what are, you know, it's a, and, yeah, and you, and, 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 and search, you, yeah. And you want to go, oh, no, I watched a lot of fucking Ron Boss on YouTube. Like, <laughs> yeah. you, you don't know what to say. And, yeah. And, and then I wonder, if part of it is for ego, right? So I met I this like awesome guy. Uh, Raghunath introduced me to this guy who does, I don't even know what it's called, but like a lot of the ceremonies at the temple. And okay. he's just like six foot five black dude who looks like he's 30. He's like 75. He will casually be telling stories. And it's like, he's hung out with Jimi Hendrix. He's hung out with fucking Muhammad Ali. And like, he just texts me to like check up on me. And we only met once and then COVID happened. And the questions I want to ask him mm -hmm. aren't, this is so embarrassing to say, and I've never said it, but they aren't like spiritual lessons. It's like, what do I say before a meal? Or what, uh, what kind of chant do I do? Or uh, what yeah. do I say as a greeting? And I do want to know these things out of respect. But, and there's, culture. Another, yeah. but there's another part of me that wonders if like, I just want to have this cool thing that I do. I man, I think I think that's fucking awesome that you're asking yourself that question. Yeah, I really do. I think that that's like super um, authentic and real. You know, like real. Like I, I do. I do think that it, there is some aspect of ego, right? Where we want to, you know, or, or support our ego. You know, it's like we go from trying to the whole reason we're or one of the main reasons, whatever, we're stepping into a spiritual path is like to destroy our ego. Right. But we want to like, you know, build this other ego, mm -hmm. you know. Um, build up the enlightened ego. It's build like up the enlightened ego, yeah. But but um, I think it's beautiful. I think that's really beautiful that you're asking yourself that question. I mean, I yeah. certainly um, wanted to, I think that it it comes from, a deeper sense of just wanting to know who you are, you know, and, um, you know, in, in India, um, the yogis have this, this path of vichara, like self inquiry, you know, there's like the bhakti school of devotion. And then there's more of like the jnana school of knowledge. And, you know, there's all these different karma yoga of service. And, um, but, but, one path is the self inquiry right and yeah. and they literally um ask who am i and it's a practice of meditation and they believe that by asking themselves and going deeper and deeper who am i oh my i know my name's trevor hall but that's but who is the i like 
and they go 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 and eventually that's the 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 goal i guess is that small eye falls away and you're merged into that universal whatever i and i think i think like for me at least when i was like i'm I'm very happy that i don't do it as much anymore because it was driving me mad but i i think i i was like trying to have some type of spiritual ego of like um I'm a part of this group. Yeah, this is my group, you know, yeah. but now it's, it's kind of, but I think it was a very necessary like thing for me to, to go through. I mean, I, I go through it sometimes now, but not nearly as much as before. But for me now, it's just like, I just love, I love this, saint, whatever saint. Yeah. I just love this saint. I don't know what that fucking makes me. Right. I don't know if that makes me. <laughs> a Hindu or a Buddhist or a fu- I'm from South Carolina. Like right. I grew up there. Like, I don't know how I got to India. I don't know what that makes me, but I, I'm just trying to go with my heart. And yeah. I really, I love this person or this being and, and, and I believe in them. Yeah. You know? But like, I don't know what that makes me, you know? And to be honest now, it's like, I don't want to be, anything i don't want to be a part of this thing or that thing i just want to like be who i am well and that's what bruce lee said about martial arts which i love so much where he goes you know take what's useful disregard what's useless and then add what's your own right yeah yeah. like and yeah when i hear ramdas or when i hear a lot of these people that i look up to so much talk a lot of them yeah they are they're pulling from all of these different um philosophies religions whatever and then they're just living a good life i mean even for people listening who are straight up atheists you know i didn't i always kind of whenever i read about taoism or buddhism i was like this speaks to me i always thought there was something bigger and then i moved to new york and everyone is cynical and it was the first time i met (laughs) atheists and i was just like what what is this And it was, I moved to New York under George Bush. And so my idea of a religious person was someone who was like stopping gay people from marrying, right? It was like big resurgence of right-wing evangelical Uh Christianity. And even when I went, I mean, to the Bhakti Center, that was the first time I was in a religious institution or whatever (laughs) since, I don't know, I went to like a, a, a church funeral when I was a kid. But other than that, you know, my idea of what religion is wasn't singing and dancing. It was like, are we going to protest a Planned Parenthood or like, right. like, wow, that's like crazy. Is something horrible to a gay person? Like, that's just what I thought um, religion wow. was. And so what I noticed is, and I haven't read the Bhagavad Gita yet. I have it. Um, I've just been on this sort of Ram Dass kick mm-hmm. until I'm ready to move on. Um, and even before reading any of the sacred texts, right? Or knowing who Hanuman is or any of this Uh stuff, what I've noticed is just by letting myself be open to Mm -hmm. the idea of us being connected and, you know, nature, um, everything working in concert together Mm -hmm. um, has made me like, less cynical i feel Mm -hmm. like it's weeding out that the shit people are embarrassed to say in my circle and i'm talking about like famous comedians Uh i I, I worked with the guy i worked with the guy this week famous guy and he said something just really inspirational on stage Uh about being an immigrant and he came up to me he's like i fucking hate saying that preachy shit i was like dude it was like the most moving (laughs) wonderful thing or during quarantine i've had friends like whisper like actually kind of like finding myself there in quarantine <laughs> and like the idea of or you know i've started getting so many fucking fan mails on instagram because at night i go walk through the mountains i usually am listening to some cheesy pop punk and i count the rabbits i've seen and it's just <laughs> this thing that i've started doing and it makes me so fucking happy and now oh. I sort of add more of like a spiritual element where like i say thank you i don't know who i'm thanking um but the fact that we are embarrassed to say shit like that, mm-hmm. however, people have no problem on Twitter blasting out racist bullshit with like yeah, their yeah. name attached to it or calling people Nazis or whatever. That's okay. But, right. but, but saying 
that you're finding peace or that, you know, I said thank you to the ocean before I left San Diego. And I was like, I can't fucking tell anybody that. <laughs> but it's these like beautiful moments that make us happy that I don't know, man, even before adding the, mm. the religious text to it, it has just saying I'm spiritual and being open to it has just made my day to day life going to bed, waking up, taking these walks, looking at animals, just fucking better. And it feels, yeah. it feels more complete, you know? And you don't need you don't need uh, you don't need any reason for that though you know right. I I it's like fuck fuck the reasoning like I'm done with my I reason way too much about anything else you know yeah. you don't need to put that into a box you don't need to put your whatever thinking the ocean into some type of category of well what right. is there an ocean god I don't know yeah, about you know, it's just like just you know it those moments i think what matters is those moments are authentic moments to yourself yeah you know they're sincere moments that's the only thing that really fucking matters i mean you can be in a whatever spiritual group and have the spiritual name and have the spiritual dress and the fucking you know paint on your forehead whatever but if you're not like sincere right um if you're not honest with yourself, then like, I really don't know what you're doing, you know? And I, I certainly went through, went through that, you know, with my own self, but like, if I was going to say anything, if I was going to say anything to you, <laughs> because yep, I, yep. I know the fucking, you know, whatever. This is all I wanted. I like, I, it's just like, it's fucking refreshing. Like, like you don't need to, like, those are authentic, beautiful moments to yourself. Like, mm -hmm. You don't need anybody else to tell you what that is or why that is. Right. Like, who cares? You know, one of my favorite uh, inspir saints, inspiration, Sri Ramakrishna, um, Indian mystic, he, he has this beautiful parable that, like, I have just tried to incorporate into my, because I thought he was speaking <laughs> directly to me, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, you came to the, you came to this, orange grove to taste the sweetness of the oranges don't you don't need to count all the trees and all the leaves and how many oranges there are in the grove to mm -hmm. taste the sweetness of the orange you just have to pick that orange and taste its sweetness right yeah. he's like if you want to get drunk one you go to the tavern one bottle of wine will will make you drunk you don't need to know about every other bottle that's in the tavern and where it was made and how it was brewed. And it's just, just take the glass and drink it. Right. So to me, it's like, you don't need to reason about all this unnecessary bullshit and this and that take, just, just yeah. take the fucking orange, man, taste the sweetness. Like Dude. don't need to reason about why does that make me feel good when yeah. I, thank the ocean like who cares you felt you felt goodness just yeah. leave it at that you know it's so fucking crazy you said that because i had this other moment um i was in san diego this weekend uh, filming some stuff and where because there were so many like i felt so many powerful sort of like i don't know like spiritual moments and i i feel like i was learning a lot about myself this weekend it was just like just a solo trip uh. um I I caught myself overdoing it and doing exactly what he sort of warned against where I got this like acai bowl and I was like, okay, I'm going to find the perfect spot on the beach to <laughs> eat it. And I walked around with this fucking bowl for so long where I was like, oh, <laughs> there's a bench that I'm watching the acai melt. I'm watching the food I was so excited about melt as I'm like, Wait, no, oh, it's too hot to say. I love that. And then I finally just had to start laughing and I like oh, God, that's so good. on some fucking bird shit covered leg <laughs> because I was like, the food is literally going to be bad if I don't eat it now. And it was so good. And like, thank God I laughed and caught myself, called myself out where I was like, this was like new enlightened Jamie walking yeah. around with like acai dripping out as it's fucking melting. And yeah, it was yeah. this perfect moment where i was like this is what i always do oh god i love that that is such a good that's such a good like metaphor for life perfect you're oh a shitty god. melting acai bowl oh dude Walk. that's yep. so good yep 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 <laughs> um so what then is your so, okay. death. <laughs> <laughs> so like what do i do on sundays <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, let's do it this way. Without putting labels to anything, um, <laughs> what were some of the things that inspired you or that still inspire you? Like the story you told, yeah. you know, like yeah, um, for that, sure. that you started to discover or, or lessons you live by or yeah. Yeah, if you want to throw on what I should do on Sundays, that would be great. Uh, <laughs> dude, I fucking, someone gave me a prayer bead to, or uh, prayer beads to start chanting. Uh -huh. And I was like, this is so perfect. And I didn't know how it worked. So he uh, went to give me a small one. And I was like, what's the big one? And he was like, oh, you have to go around. I was like, I'll do the fucking big one. I have not made it through once. <laughs> it is so much chanting. And I was like, my voice is shot. I was like, I have three podcasts to do today. I can't fucking, I, I did like six this morning. Um, <laughs> Anyway, that was a side note. Um, yeah, so talk about some of the shit that I kind of it. like I love it. I didn't love move it. you. <laughs> um, yeah, I think for me, like I, I just have always. I mean, obviously, I'm a musician, so I'm, I'm obviously inspired by um, sound and yep. music and vibration and you know this type of thing. Um, but when I, you know, when I was really getting into, I guess, like Indian culture. I, I have consequently like really got into like those Indian um, like kind of mystic poets and mystic musicians like yeah. uh, Kabir, for example, is a very famous uh, mystic poet and um, was lots of different like devotional kind of, I guess, chanting really, yeah. you know, because it was music. It was like, okay, this is great, you know, but I've always, I've always been inspired by, the the humans you know the the um the saints the the because for me it's like the living examples of this is like possible because they like lived it you know yeah. like i i'm like in in a way it's like you know i want the proof you know yeah um, and so i've always just been mo so moved by reading about their lives and and um and just like reading you know their conversations you know like um ananda maima and uh, of course sri ramakrishna sharada devi neem Kroli baba all these great you know mystics um ramana maharshi it, it just uh that's always been my thing for some reason i just always loved the the living examples you yeah. know and um and for me um I've always been, you know, some people like to, you know, meditate a lot. Some people like to serve, you know, everybody's got their own thing. For me, it's always been about um, the the holy name, you know, and, and that chanting, you know, um, because I think it's just sound, you know, I'm, I'm a sound dude, I'm a musician, whatever, you know. Yeah. And I find that no matter what, um, especially in India, you know, no matter what uh, saint I'm reading about or like mystic, because they're, you know, all different past traditions, different parts of India, they all, you know, they all agree on this point, you know, of the, of the holy name. So I'm like, okay, well, if I can hold on to one thing that's going to yeah. fucking save me here, you know, not save me, I don't like that, but, you know, just, I've always just been attracted to that. And that's yeah. always where my mind has gone, you know, well, I, and, and that's where I think that's that, that was kind of the gateway for me too, because before I had like the crazy spiritual mushroomy Ramdas experience, I went to the yeah the the kirtan with Raghunath, and I was like, why am I crying? Like yeah. I've heard music that I know more that speaks to me more. I was like, I don't know what these fucking statues are. Right, and right. We're all looking at. I can't turn away. I know right. that. I know I'm completely fucking drawn to them. And, you know, look, there's always going to be religious or not, spiritual or not. There is something incredibly powerful about being in a room full of people who are nodding to the same beat, who are feeling the same music. Who are yeah, being, yeah. You know, I mean, sure. you know that. But, um, yeah, adding the names. And like I said, I still don't really know what the names mean or I'm like, which one is God? Is it Ram? Is it Krishna? Like, I don't know. Um, yeah. But there's something so fucking powerful about it. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it's just listening. It's, it's more about listening to the vibration, you know, because yeah. all these, all these saints and mystics, they, they talk about the, um, 
these syllables, you know, these like sacred syllables, they, they believe so much in the potency of sound. And yeah. um, a lot of these names or syllables don't have like a literal meaning. And I think when, with our Western minds, we're always trying to explain things in, in a literal way. Yeah. And um, I think that the, the magic, um, it, for me at least, in, it, is, is just the vibration of the sounds. And I know that sounds so out there and all this stuff, but, but there's a lot of times where I'm not even thinking about a form or, um, or an actual whatever deity or this and that. It's more just listening to these holy sounds. It's like if I, you know, if I'm a, a perfect example, is like if I'm yelling at you, yeah. You know, if I'm screaming at you, no matter what I'm, no, no matter what I'm <laughs> saying, almost more so than the words is the energy, right? Behind, right. Like you're right. feeling like, oh my God, my body's fucking tightening up and this and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it's like, if I'm, you know, speaking to you words of love or, you know, it's again, it's almost more than the words. It's the energy behind those words that yes, I, yes. that you're feeling, you know? So I think like maybe I can apply that to like the, 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 the with the Holy name, it's like, it's for, it's almost more so the vibration yeah. that creating in my being um, than like a literal translation, you know? Yeah. Well, um, I mean, I've always been attracted to that. I've always been attracted to the, the, the effect of the sound. I yeah. Guess. Well, I mean, and that would 100% explain why I was so, like, physically moved yeah, um, yeah. without knowing. Yeah, but, of course. So, so what's the actual belief? What do they say that the sounds, do they? Uh, yeah, do yeah. The the sound is, you know, a lot of these great saints and, and people that advocate this chanting of a divine mantra or whatever is that this, this, sound is non-different the sound is non-different than the universal being or god or whatever you want to call it and that's like really far out to think it's like holy shit like well i keep saying it you know but like you know sometimes nothing happens right right, you know, right. Sometimes like oh i feel something you know um but the the belief is that these names are on their their directly like the sauce you know it's like directly it you know yeah. um and by chanting these names over and over and over again these sounds are you know revealing uh something inside us our, mm -hmm. our truest nature that we're we've been longing for in all the wrong places you know and by by uh by repeating again and again and again and again and again um it's continually like washing this cloth within us. It's as, as Ram Dass would say, it's, it's cleansing the mirror of the heart, you know, and when, when the mirror is clear, you know, we can see our, our true nature, our reflection. But right now there's all this stuff on the mirror, you know, there's all these th stories we've created in our minds about how shitty we are and, and God, we're, we're just fucking awful people or we're just the body or I'm this. And, just, you know, it's, it's endless, right? Yeah. And, and through these, these names, through these holy syllables, these divine sounds, um, it, it's not about religion. It's about the, that sound. I can't stand the word religion. It freaks me out, you know? know. So yeah. it's like those sounds slowly, slowly, gradually, but eventually, as Krishna Das would say, reveal to us our, our truest nature. And then we're, we're united in this, you know, the goal of life in a way is to find out who we are, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's, it's like, it's so beautiful. You know, you walk into this temple and you don't know any of the stories or names of the gods or why these, these statues are there, but you're crying like, man, that's it. You know, that's, that, right. that it's like, that's the proof right there is it's the sound, you know, even like, even with like Western music or something, you know, I mean, I'm sure all of us, every human has at least one moment where they're listening to a song, you know, and they feel something different, yeah. you know, they feel out of their body or whatever. 
um, it's sound, it's vibration. And in India, you know, they believe that everything came from vibration. That's the big point, right? Mm. All of creation from the gross to the subtle to everything, it actually came from sound, om, it came from a syllable, mm. right? And you can't define om, right? Yeah. But, but it's, it's only known to those who have realized, have felt the sound, have realized the sound. You know, they say that these mystic beings, these yogis, they're always hearing the constant om. They're oh, always shit. in touch with it. It's like, whoa, you know? Yeah. Um, it's like Bob Marley, he said so beautifully, who, who feels it knows it, mm. right? I can't, oh. explain, I can't explain it to yeah. you in logical words, you know? And I've tried sometimes in my own self to like, to myself, like, oh, what just fucking happened? It's a, da, 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 and it actually just messes it up, really. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you just, again, we just want to taste the sweetness of the orange, yeah. right? We, 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 it's like my mother is is uh god he says it so beautifully again it's like we you know when we're growing up it's like i don't know who my mother's parents were or what they did or where she came from or what she did she's my mother right. that's it it's just my my mother right same thing with divine mother it's like i don't my mother yeah she's the queen of the universe and all of we're all her children and nature and oh my god the complete but she's my mother. I don't care about all that stuff. Right. So a lot of these saints and these mystics say, go to that first, right? That's so like, funny. That, that's that a first. perfect because metaphor we're, we're for that. So hard to explain so many things. It's just so exhausting. Yeah. You know, let's just, just, just taste the sweetness. Yeah. Um, Dude, that's such a perfect metaphor for what we were talking about with defining religion where, yeah, I wouldn't march up to my mom and be like, show me your family tree. Like, <laughs> she's my mom. Like, that's it. Um, I, uh, oh, God damn it. It's already been an hour. All right. Tell me when you have to go. I, uh, I, I wanted to ask you really quick about. I'm um, good. I'm good. I'm good. Are you good? Yeah, I'm good. Um, okay, cool. So I haven't talked about this a ton on the show um, with, uh, so Robin Williams was like a really good friend of mine. And he was the reason I had like a career. Like he like uh -huh. discovered me, plucked me, all that stuff. And uh, I just did this great comedian, Joy, Joe Coy's podcast. And we ended up sharing Robin's stories. And I'm, I think I'm going to air it next week. Uh -huh. so, so I've been thinking about him a lot um, yeah. recently. And I was wondering when, when Ram Dass died, when uh, Maharaji died, mm -hmm. um, I mean, fuck, when Robin died, I literally did the opposite of everything he told me to do. Like, he was the reason that I stayed in comedy. He convinced me not to quit. Like, I wanted to be in a fucking band. Mm -hmm. And then he died, and I was like, fuck this. Like, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. And recently, um, I've just been, like, feeling, like, that presence more as kind of I've been diving more into spirituality and stuff. Um, was there part of you when you lost people that you looked up to so much that you almost wanted just to be like, fuck this? Or because, you know, I mean, the people you lost talked about death so much, right? Like Ram Dass talked about how comfortable he was with death so much that I, I, I wonder if it was almost different. But I just don't know many people who had an experience uh, similar to us with like a larger than life person that everyone else knows. And yeah. sometimes you lose them, and it's like, ugh. You know, yeah. It's, yeah, I remember when Obama was talking about Robin, I was like, why is Barack Obama know my friend? Like, it was just right. wow, it was that's so weird, and you don't – I let the lessons he gave me kind of, like, go with him, and now I'm kind of trying to reclaim them. So, uh, yeah, I was wondering your experience with that. Yeah, well, first off, I'm, that's, I'm sorry about that. That's, that's a tough loss. It was rough. Uh, yeah, um, I can't imagine. Um. Yeah, just wow, thinking about people that I've lost is quite something. Uh, yeah. um, Sorry, that's not the question I usually end no, all no, podcasts no, with. Beautiful. Tell me about the people you died before we <laughs> get on <laughs> to commercial. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. Um, I think my yeah experience has been uh, trying to just think like what you know when my grandmother passed. That was a big one, or uh, one of these 
this priest that passed um that was a huge figure to a lot of people and had a intimate relationship with him i was actually in india when he passed it, and and uh -huh. um i i was i saw him the day before and everything was fine and it's interesting because i think obviously there is an initial um sad you know horrible sadness yeah, uh, of shock and and uh uh i i also think the manner of death also really influences one's feelings you know if it's an unexpected thing you're going to have a different reaction to right, right, if right, right. somebody's you know old age and like you kind of meditated on it a little bit like yeah. this is happening whatever um but i find that I, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's, you know, those things is like, I remember the exact moment of where I was yep. when my grandmother died and exactly what I was doing. I remember the exact moment of when Haradanji, yeah. our priest passed away. Like what, you know, I can I, feel the train. I, can, I, I was, with, yeah, with, with can, Rob, yeah, with Robin, my, my ex-wife called and it was right when the train happened to be going above ground back into Brooklyn, the subway. Uh, and uh, I could, like, feel the tracks below me oh yeah when you i think about it can air the smell like it's crazy you know yep. um but i think for me it's it's almost uh oh man it's so crazy it's almost a it's such a deep truth you know it's such a truth death is such a a uh direct like line to truth you know right. and um of our existence of so many things and i think when it happens to like somebody that we love or revere like you're asking um for me it's been a immediate like kind of uh uh, uh presence mm. right where where um yes the physical is gone you know um but uh like when my grandmother passed i remember exactly where i was i was up in napa at a friend's house and i was literally the car was outside to take me to play this concert and uh it was raining and whatever and my dad called and said you know mama passed away and i just you know bawled my eyes out but i felt her everywhere oh. you know it was like a, it was just like a. I'm cr I'm crying right now like I'm really like sad and everything but like I'm also like nothing happened yeah so it's really interesting the same thing with Ram Dass like Ram Dass is it's again it's a different example it's a different person it's it's um for somebody that was so in touch with uh death <laughs> and 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 uh his spirit and everything it was like i didn't feel anything i was yeah. sad but i felt him everywhere it was yeah. like so it's it's hard to say like the the most i think the most uh direct thing with death for me was that priest in india passing because in india death is very much in your face you know yeah. uh, like i remember when he passed that morning we were in calcutta and um our friend came in the kitchen from the phone call and said, you know, hard on you passed away. And I was shocked because I was just fucking with him yesterday. Yeah. Like I was, just, and our plan was to go to the oh, temple wow. that day to go see him, you know? And uh, we went to um, his, like his village, which was like, just like a little bit outside Calcutta, like a suburb or whatever. And what they do in India is they, they put the, uh, they put the body in this, in this, um, like cast, oh, like an open casket, like see-through casket thing. And every, and they take it all around and everybody throws flowers and the whole thing. And so I, you know, he came in the car, you know, to, to, into his birth village and everybody's fucking going crazy because yeah. he was like this huge figure. Um, women are just wailing and i'm the only like white person you yeah. know in this group event you know i'm just like how am i fucking here right now yeah. and i it was the first time i went up to a 
a body, you know, I never and, have. Yeah. And, and touch the feet of this dead body because that's whatever custom of, but of a person that I've loved and respected and like, but I like did not feel like he was gone, but I was standing in front of your foot, your body, yeah. your dead. you're not there anymore, you know, but like, I don't know. It's just really interesting. You know, yeah. um, I've had friends that have committed suicide, you know, that where it's a death from pain. Yeah. And um, I think those are probably the hardest ones for that I've experienced because, yeah. you know, when you have somebody like Ram Dass, who's, who's kind of like meditated on death and Ram Dass died. And I was like, this will make him more powerful. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's just, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, of course. But, and when you, when you, you know, have a, a loved one that passes from, pain and sadness and it's and awful it's it's so awful and because well, then you start to go what could i have done and then yeah the whole kind of thing about you but I, and... think that, I think that that shows that people that that do the work uh to to i don't know like accept death or i don't know ready them i don't know what it is but yeah. like get in touch with maybe something beyond their bodies it has effect on the people that are around you when you pass, right. you know, and that's quite interesting. That's yeah. quite interesting. But I think, yeah, I, I'm sorry, I kind of ramble, but to, to no, this answer, is great. This is your question more um, concisely. I I felt like with those the peers, like you're asking about peers that have passed. I think because their spirit is so big, you know, and so beautiful and yeah. and um, influential and inspiring. It's almost like they didn't go anywhere. Right. And uh, I still feel them now, you know, more than ever in a way. Yeah. And I know that may be like a cliche thing to say, but it's it's just, it's true. You know? No, and, and you know, thank you so much for saying all that. No, that was great. Uh, that, that would have been a real dick move if I asked you about the death of people who cared about you. And I was like, wrap it up, buddy. <laughs> you're, you're fucking rambling. No, it was really powerful. And, you know, it was funny when you mentioned that, like I felt my grandparents that I've lost. And yeah. what I noticed was, you know, when Robin died, I, w I guess I would still consider myself an atheist and I was just mad and I was depressed and all this stuff. And then, yeah, it was recently this year that I've started to feel that presence more. Mm. And, uh, and I think it's just being open to it as well, mm, you yeah. know, and yeah. not letting that inner cynic talk you out of this is stupid or this yeah. is real, you know? Or, yeah or whatever um and so the last thing i wanted to talk to you about um mm -hmm. also it has to do with kind of following your heart in a different way mm -hmm. which is you know people listening to the show know about my whole like la back and forth like you're gonna be huge year and uh, all that stuff and <laughs> it's so uh, funny, isn't it? <laughs> uh it's, it's insane i mean you probably got this a lot where the thing i got the most and, and look, I wasn't like a fucking 18 year old. Like I was still a, a, a cynical comic mid twenties, but I had all the big meetings, all the networks agents, yeah. you know, cause especially once Robin started, cause I, there were, there was like a year or two that things were going really well. Uh huh. And, then and how, Robin, old were you? how old were you? Like when you, got the... 20, 20, between 26 and 28. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. Like things yeah. started happening overseas. And then there was one year where it was like, the Showtime show, Conan, Interview Magazine. Although yeah, the Interview all Magazine, things. but the Interview Magazine thing is funny because my dad moved recently and I, I, they, he sent me the issue and it was like one of those like five comics to watch and it was like Aubrey Plaza, Reggie Watt. It was all these people who are Aziz, like wildly famous. And I'm uh -huh. like, you know, when you see those lists and there's always one guy that you're like, who the, what happened to that guy? That's me. Yeah. Um, like I, I'm the sad story in that list. Uh, it, that's who I am. And, and so, and then when Robin happened, Robin literally just started calling everybody. I mean, it was insane. And so I had all these meetings and what I heard the most, and I bet fucking money on it that you heard the same thing is essentially, we love what you do. Can you not do what you do? <laughs> um, which is very much you know so for me i was very like political i was very edgy uh -huh. like, we love the politics we love the edge can you like not talk about politics <laughs> like, 
lose the edge. Right. And they want to turn you into the thing that everyone else is doing. Right. And it took me rock bottoming twice, moving to fucking Arizona mm -hmm. uh, on a whim to finally start becoming successful and be like, oh, this is my voice. This right. is what I've always wanted to do. Right. Uh, and it is so fucking hard. Uh, yeah. But did you, you kind of went, uh, did you go through something similar? Oh God. Yeah. I mean, I was much younger than you. So I was, you know, like I said, 18, 19. And I think at those, especially in those years, regardless of the music industry, regardless of all that, you're, you're finding yourself, you're really like, it's kind of like some formative years, you know, in a yeah. way, you know, and, um, to have so much influence, to have so much outside influence at that point in your life is awful, yeah. you know, especially. <laughs> from, and then to add that influence is coming from the fucking music industry. That's yeah. doubly awful. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So I, I can't even tell you how many. Um, and to your credit, just to be clear, I fell for all the shit. Like I wasn't oh, like so like, I still oh my God. Like, this year over the summer like things are finally back to where they should be, but on my yeah. terms. Uh -huh. And then my lease was coming up and there was part of me that I was like, Oh, things are going well now. So I got to move back to LA and maybe I'll call that old agent who's uh, yeah. not to do the podcast because there's always still that part of me. That's like, yeah, but it's not real until you do it. Yeah. yeah. Way. And it's horrible because it's like, no, what the thing people like is that we're not doing the thing they yeah. wanted us to do. Oh man, that dude, it's, that's so funny. It's like so similar. It's just yeah. so similar, but yeah, I mean, God, I, I th again, I think being so young and you, you think you just naturally think that grown ups know everything and are right. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like I was, I was like, you know, 18 going to, I met like every head of the late of every label like oh. virgin records uh columbia records geffen records you know hollywood records and each person told me how i should be what i should do how i should sing what i should act and you believe it you believe it you know and um and i think it was just it was just so it was it was like i was trying to fit a uh a square peg you know into like a round hole i i it, I was just constantly met with frustration and yeah. agony and all this stuff. And man, that was, you know, God, I'm 33 now. So, you know, almost 15 years ago, I can honestly say that I don't think that I've become comfortable in myself or like honest in what I'm doing until like, honestly, like the last like three year, few yeah. years. Dude, I still hear those voices. And, oh yeah and by the way i've talked to like wildly famous comedians and actors where it's like we'll still think about that sometimes over a tweet if a yeah. tweet doesn't do well i'm like well i guess everyone was fucking right about me and it's like yeah, what yeah. the fuck is happening yeah. whereas like yeah you know well so talk about kind of the positive when you had that turnaround where you like what triggered you to be because everyone listening knows uh, about all the people who are full of shit. But the, the, ins the, the inspiring part of this story, what made you kind of be like, hey, man, I'm going to sing about uh, more spiritual shit. Or I'm going to say, you know, uh, Lizzie, um, who I was talking to yesterday, she was like, I love his music, but I listen to him almost like it's like devotional. And I was like, uh -huh. yeah, that is kind of how I feel when I listen to the music. Yeah. Um, which does not sound marketable. Uh, if yeah, well, that's always this. been the thing. You know, that's always been the thing. And I've tried, I've bought into uh, the the uh, opinions and this, like, so many times. And the thing for me was, um, the, you know, this is the music that comes out of me. Yeah. And I was, and, and I was trying so hard to write that commercial song or be that whatever per, do more of the things that are more mainstream oh, and it's not even stuff. good when you do it the oh, times like, I've tried that's to... the thing that's the thing every time i've tried to do it every fucking time it has crashed and burned <laughs> so fucking bad you know so it's like it's just like i i just want at eventually i just had to be like i'm not that artist man i'm just yeah. not and like if i don't fucking sell 
platinum records that's okay it's just not me i can't yeah. do that you know i'd rather just be honest with myself and well and you also but again it's that thing it's that thing of like we need to go through that to find ourselves yes we need to, yes we, we do it sucks but that's how it goes we need to go through yep. all those things to learn about who we are and what we're comfortable with and and what you know yeah just like what we came here to do it's just that's yeah. it and yeah. it becomes a fucking it becomes a force field you know i talk about this with just loving yourself in general but it really does become this superpower because i mean look you are wildly successful um you know with i, I i'm doing the best that i've done in a very long time mm. just from the art i've been making over quarantine i was like i'm yeah. start making yeah. music again and i was like i want to make weird videos on instagram i want to do the podcast the podcast is called a fuck up's guide to self-help which all these agents told me not to name it that and i was like no i'm gonna do it because that's what the show is right. and suddenly week by week everything is getting bigger everything yeah, is getting yeah. bigger and so you try to tell people that you go hey man uh take the artsy spiritual side out of it just success wise if you do what you love and what is authentic to you 100%. it is probably going to work out cuz it's um, well again it comes back to vibration it, yeah, uh, yeah. You, you can feel when you're around somebody that is comfortable with who they are man that that does you know you can feel it it has an effect on you it's 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 so lovely to be around yeah. and then you can feel it when somebody is trying so hard to be oh. something they're not it's tight it's like ah mm -hmm. you know so like you're talking about that force field i love that kind of metaphor because it's like it's so true it's and you can't so lose if you're doing if you're making the <laughs> art you want to make whether you are playing in front of 50 people whether you're playing at yeah. red rocks like as long as those basic needs are met, it's like, yeah. there you go. You yeah, know? Yeah, 100%, man. Yeah, it's really, that's be, beautiful. Um, well, listen, I will let you go. Um, this was <laughs> fucking great, man. I feel yeah, like I'm so happy that, it's funny because Drew texted me and he, he's like, hey, you know, I got one of my good friends does a podcast. He'd love to have you on it. Um, you know, here's his name, whatever, all this stuff. And usually that happens with other people and like it takes like a month <laughs> to like get yep. going yeah but th that was like yesterday he texted me yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it was like my manager texted he's like w what's your schedule i'm like oh, i'm free like dude all of <laughs> i mean i cannot I, I again it's one of those things that it sounds so silly with all the bigger stuff we talked about that it's like this was destined to be but if i look at the timeline of like discovering who you are like the, everything happened in a week. You yeah. Know? And like, oh, that was one of the things that I did over this sort of spiritual weekend is watching you and Krishna Das. Mm. Like, that was so powerful that mm. I was like, oh, I should talk to him next week. Like without, because yeah, yeah. to me, it just felt so right. And without for, you know, the normal bullshit of like, oh yeah, there's managers to go through their schedule. Right, right, right. And then when he was like, when are you free? I never say tomorrow because I don't want to sound desperate. <laughs> But I think I phrased it to your manager where I'm like, well, the new record's coming out. And so, like, I got home. Like, I, dude, I got home, like, eight hours ago from, like, this crazy drive from California. Um, <laughs> and then I was like, I can do it tomorrow morning. And then, yeah. And then when he shot back, I was like, yep, that's exactly oh, it. Oh, yeah. It's just so fun. It was, it was so it was funny. meant to be. Yeah. Um, well, listen, man, I'm so psyched about the new album. Congratulations yeah. on everything. Thanks I'm for having me. Yeah, thanks for having music me. Music you make. And, uh, yeah, I'll send you my number an email either through drew or manager just because i feel like uh this podcast was too heavy for us not to be friends now <laughs> <laughs> i love it uh, i was like no, help I, me find god and here's a story about my dead friend i was like oh wow. god, you're so funny dude no but i was just thinking as we were talking i was like i'd love to send you a um a book that uh is just so magical one of my top three yes like, books of all time um it's just, I think, I think you'd really enjoy it. Just talking to you and getting to know you. I'd, I, I think you'd love it. And I love sharing the book because it's just, it's, i it's just oh, such an incredible book. Oh my God. It's, about, be... it's a, this woman, it's this yeah. woman who is from um, Austria, I think she was, and she was like a famous p uh, classical pianist and um, she very European, whatever, you know, and then this was in like, this was I don't know exactly, maybe the fifties or sixties, but she, um, she got involved with um, this one teacher, Krishnamurti, yeah. uh, 
who was like like a philosopher guru type of character and she got really involved with with his kind of group and meditation and all this stuff eventually goes to india to become a teacher at his school and while she's in india she meets ananda mahima who is you know one of the most celebrated saints of in indian history yeah and she long story short she becomes she learns bengali and hindi and she becomes ma's translator um whoa and uh and her like disciple and you know devotee and eventually she just becomes totally transformed into this you know her name is a uh, um oh god atmananda i think her name is yeah, yeah. but um the book is her journal oh my god it's her journal entries it there's no it's not like a book like and so it's so amazing because you see in the beginning of the book it's very european she's discovered and it's so beautiful because she writes about all of her struggles all of her doubts Mm. all of her things with meditation her questions and and it's so beautiful because it's like yeah fuck i had that question (laughs) but her close relationship with this you know extraordinary being eventually by the end of the book it's just ma's words that she's writing down oh my god but it's just a really like it's a really amazing book like yeah. just to be a book but it's also like it's just affected me so much i think i've read it like two or three times no but. that is what i need when uh for anyone listening when i eventually disappear to india and uh completely got the grave we all know who to blame Trevor <laughs> fucking Hall. In the, as you're describing the book i'm like mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I know where this is going. <laughs> my fault. It's my fault. Uh, well, yeah, brother. And I got your back. Anything you need, uh, I'll Thank go you. send you my info now. And then uh, I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you know when I post it. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Take care. All right, brother. Talk soon. Wait. <laughs> Dude, that was so good. <laughs>